Hi, I'm Phil, and in this short video, we're going to have a look at using sine, cos, and radians to draw a simple circle, but without using the ellipse function. Sine, cos, and radians are probably familiar to you from maths in maybe year 10 or so. Now, what they actually do is these two calculate either the sine or the cos of an angle, whereas this function converts angle into radians. We need to use radians because the angle, rather than being measured in degrees, needs to be in radians, which is 0 to 2 pi. The output of these two functions is a number between minus 1 and 1. Or if I were going to chart it the other way, we have minus 1 and we have 1. So our sine wave looks something like this, and we have this is either 180 degrees or pi radians and this here is 360 degrees or 2 pi radians and our value for cos looks something a little like this. So we've seen these charts before we, we're familiar with what a sine wave looks like and things like that but how do we actually translate this into something that we draw with? I'm going to put in some code and we can see how it works. So you can see here we've drawn something to the screen, but it's just one tiny dot in the middle. The reason for this is because sine and cos are between 0 and 1, the radius of this circle is only tiny. So let's add another variable. And let's multiply the sine of our angle by that radius. And the cos of our angle by that radius. So here we have a lot of tiny little ellipses drawn around in a circle to create a larger circle. I can also use begin shape and end shape with the vertex to have the same effect. If I were to change this to 180, so we're only drawing half of the circle, we're not closing it off, so I'll end shape with close and run this again. So what processing is doing is putting a vertex at every degree around the circle. The value of our radius increases the distance from the circle that our point moves. The value of i, which we're using for our angle by converting it to radians, describes how far around the circle to go each time. For example, if I were to change i++ to i++ equals 30, we would end up with this shape, which has 12 sides. Or if I were to change it to 36, we would have a 10-sided shape. Or if I change it to 120, we'd have a triangle. Or if it was 90, we'd have a square. So just to recap, so just to recap, our angle is given to sine and cos and it should be in radians. Our radius is multiplied by sine and cos. We use our x center and y center to change the middle of our circle when we draw it. So what radians is doing is taking a value from on some scale from 0 to 360 and it's changing it to a scale of 0 to 2 pi which is actually 6.28 something. 
This looks quite similar to how we've used the map function before, and in fact that's pretty much what we're doing. The only reason you wouldn't use radians is if your number that you're giving to radians isn't on a scale of 0 to 360 degrees. For example, you might have some data which is on a scale of 0 to 1, which means that it's been normalized, and you want to change it from, and you want to convert it to radians. So there we have a simple piece of code that draws a circle without using the circle function or the ellipse function.